Hey guys, it's me again. Um, I posted the video on doing the hot wire cutter not that long ago and I got really good responses on it. I also posted some still shots of it on some of the various forums so that people would actually, if they wanted to build one themselves, so I could go into a little bit more detail than what I did in the video. For the most part, the biggest question I've seen has been people questioning about the power supply. Um, the power supply that I use with this one is your simple basic wall ward as I mentioned. Um, these things are dirt cheap, you can find them almost anywhere, and they're probably one of the cheapest ways that you can get a good solid DC voltage source. Um, you probably have one or two of these things lying around. This one as I mentioned in the video was from I think an answering machine or something that I had. So finding one isn't a problem. Um, the issues come in though is will the one that you find supply enough wattage for your wire? You don't really need a ton of wattage, but you also don't want to burn anything up. Um, there are charts on the web that you can go through and they'll actually tell you based on the wire gauge of your nichrome wire, the length of your wire, um, what your voltage curve, what your voltage and power curves are going to be and basically how much heat it's going to put out. Um, going down that route, you're getting into doing some serious math and figuring out a bunch of stuff and there are tons of sites out there that will actually walk you through it. And in fact, you'll probably see one at the bottom of this video because there's one that I found recently that has a really, really, this person put together, put a lot of time into it and did a lot of the math work for you. Um, I'm not going to go into that same math now. I'm just going to go through just kind of the basics of checking to make sure you don't burn anything up. So in the case of ours, seeing how we have one already built, we can, we actually have the luxury of being able to check what our resistance is across our wire before we, rather than looking it up on a chart. So we grab our meter, you, you grab the trusty voltmeter. Got to have one of these if you're going to do stuff in electronics. It makes life so much easier. And you stick it on resistance and you just check your check your resistance across the wire and we get huh, seven ohms exactly. Seven ohms it is. So we know across our wire we've got a seven ohm load. All right, I'm gonna, I need more room. That's not a good place to put that. We'll stick it over here on the other stuff. Okay, so we know we've got our seven ohm resistance. We know that our power supply here, our little 12 volt power supply, which I'm gonna try and put it up there, see if you guys can see that. It's pretty much in focus. It'll handle, it'll do 12 volts and a maximum of 1.3 amps. So, I mean, this is a fairly, fairly chunky one. What we need to find out though is what's the maximum wattage we can get out of this versus the wattage that we need to push our wire. We can do that really, really easy. A couple of minor equations that are just basic Ohm's Law stuff. Um, what Ohm's Law is, it tells you, it's a way of, of figuring out your voltage and your resistances in a circuit and all the wonderful electrical stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into it because I'm lousy at explaining it. Scary. Get a degree in electrical engineering, still can't explain the stuff. Anyway, so rather than me going through that, We'll go to the web. Did a search and we looked for Ohm's Law calculators and lo and behold, there's one sitting out there. So the first thing we're going to find out is what our maximum wattage is for our transformer. Okay. The equation for that is really, really straightforward. It's power is going to equal our voltage, which is E, times our current, which is I. So in our case, we've got 12 volts and we've got 1.3 amps and we hit the wonderful calculate and it's going to tell us that our unit is capable of 15.6 watts. So that's the maximum amount that we can get out of this thing, 15.6 watts. What we need to find out now is what wattage is our wire going to draw. To do that we're going to use a different equation. In this case we're going to use our power based off of current and resistance. We know our current it's 1.3 amps we know our resistance is 7 ohms, so we'll scroll down our thing and find that equation. Equation for that one, power is going to equal the square, or the square of our current times the resistance. So we'll go with our resistance, which is 7 ohms, and our current, which is 1.3 again. Hit our trusty calculate, and it's going to spit out a nice, happy 11.83. So just under 12 watts of power is what we're going to be using for this thing every time we turn it on. 
seeing how our power supply can do 15, we're only using 12, we should be fine with this. But let's say we were using a different one. Let's say, let's try what the power supply is for this one. And this one, I'm going to put it up here and see if you can see it. This one is 6 volt, whoa, got a glare on there, One. 100 or excuse me 1500 milliamps or 1.5 amps so let's find out if we could use this one on our circuit we'll go through again we'll see how we're going to figure out the wire part first because we have that one up already we'll go our 7 ohms and our 1.5 amps hit our calculate that's going to be 15.75 watts if we were to use this power supply is what would be required or how much that particular wire would try and use. And I don't think this power supply is going to be able to supply that at the voltage we need, but we'll find out if it will work. Go back in here to our other location. Our power is going to equal our voltage times our current. So we'll go 6 volts this time because it's smaller. And 1.5. And this time around, it's only going to be capable of doing 9 watts. So if we were to try and use this power supply, ooh, and even worse, this one is AC. Anyway, we'll assume that it was a DC one, but it's saying here it's AC. Either way, if we were to try and use this one with our wire, chances are we'd end up shorting out this little power supply. Um, worst case scenario is we'd actually trip the breaker because it was short out. But now that we know that it won't even come close to supplying what we need, we're not even going to bother with it. So that's really it. That's the electrical side of it in a nutshell. There are other things, and like I said, I will have a link in this. You've probably seen it at the bottom of the screen now that shows more of what's possible with this and going into greater detail. But that's really it. I mean, find your power supply. As long as it will supply the current, you're good to go. So take care, guys, and don't burn anything down.